Excited about Airsoft? Hit the like button and comment to join other Airsofters in the conversation. What's up, Airsofters? I'd wager that to most of you, the Mark 18 is a familiar face, and that's probably because it's got a lot of good going for it. All the rail space you could want, familiar AR-style controls, and a no-frills attitude that puts you in the mood to do some serious work on the Airsoft field. For those reasons, and more, it's no stretch to say that the Mark 18 is one of the most popular M4 AR-15 configuration slash platforms of today. Something else that has gained a lot of popularity is the game-changing QBS system, or Quick Buffer System, which allows you to remove just the buffer tube to change your spring in your AEG. So what EMG Helios has done is combined these two popular things into one great system the DDM4 and DD Mark 18 AEGs. There are a lot of lookalikes, but to have a true DDM4 or DD Mark 18, you need a couple key features. First and foremost, the rail. But not just any rail, you need a Daniel Defense licensed RIS 2 rail and a beautifully engraved Daniel Defense Forge style receiver. Starting with the rail, you have four full-length Picatinny sections on all sides, the top one blending in perfectly with the upper receiver. This means you can put whatever you want, wherever you want. Lights, lasers, PEQ boxes, pressure switches, sling swivels, grips, bipods, rail covers, optics, you name it. The rail goes all the way to the end of the outer barrel, stopping just where the threads begin, meaning that when you put a mock suppressor or tracer unit on this thing, it hides the outer barrel perfectly and gives you a mean, clean-looking machine. You'll notice these screws on the sides of the rail. If you remove them, you can take the bottom portion of the rail off and mount a grenade launcher. Or you can, of course, put one on the pick rail itself. Really, the possibilities are endless, and that's the beauty of the RIS-2 rail that makes the Mark 18 what it is. Notice that every other space of Picatinny has a letter and a number. This is to reference when you're taking things off and putting them back on, so you don't have to count spaces. You can just find the place you need, like T12 here, and slap it on in the exact same position it was before you removed it. Also, check out the licensed trademarks on top of the rail. It adds that extra level of cool. Part of what makes this rail so cool is its super strong lockup back here at the receiver. This configuration of bolts is instantly recognizable as a free-floating rail system, and it was designed by Daniel Defense for the military to be extra robust while still being serviceable. And if you ask me, it really adds to the aesthetics and durability. Durasthetics. I'm sorry. Included are a pair of flip-up backup iron sights, and they flip up easily and lock into place. There's a button on the opposite side that allows you to fold them back down. Now this is nice. This locking feature prevents you from accidentally bumping them on a barricade or a wall or even on some gear, having them flip down so when you draw down on your opponent, you're without a sighting system. Now I love that these are included, but a red dot can go a long way to give you a lot more precision with your aiming, a lot more repeatability, and they just look cool. This full metal receiver has both the Daniel Defense logo and the appropriate trademarks, as well as a unique serial number on the left side of the magwell. The upper has a bullet shape around the 556, or the caliber of the real DDM4, and then the designation of the rifle at the back, which depends on the length of the handguard. 
either the M4A1 for the longer 12-inch rail or the Mark 18, which has the shorter 9.5-inch rail. The pistol grip on these AEGs is very comfortable, with just enough texture to help you get a grip. It's slim up near the top, which is great for your thumb and trigger finger. It does need to be a little bit wider around the middle and the bottom to accommodate the motor, of course, because it's a motor pistol grip. And really, it's one of the more comfortable pistol grips I've used. And I like the extra material here. It helps me really lock in my grip. The controls are pretty standard for an AR variant rifle with non-ambidextrous select fire switch and magazine release. The ball detent is nice and strong, giving you a very positive select fire switch when you're going between modes, which I really, really like. And thanks to the electronic trigger, it's got a nice snappy trigger feel too. The mag release fits well with most mags we tested. Here's our fit and function test for M4 mag compatibility. All mags that we tested fit in the mag well, and all mags fed great on semi-auto. However, not every magazine fed well on full auto. This is not a reflection of the quality or feeding of those specific magazines. Instead, it's likely a result of the engagement between those magazine feed lips and the hop-up unit that's installed in these particular rifles. Just something to be aware of when shopping for extra mags here at evic.com. The charging handle is rugged and stiff. Charging it opens the dust cover and locks back the mock bolt for hop-up adjustment. The hop-up chamber is metal and of the rotary variety. The mock bolt can of course be released with a press of the bolt release, also known lovingly as the ping pong paddle, which has a lever arm that crosses in front of the gearbox. The stock is where the magic happens. More accurately, the buffer tube, as we call it in airsoft. Although, if you're more familiar with real ARs, you might refer to it as a receiver extension. This knurled castle nut can be loosened, allowing for a quarter turn of the buffer tube that exposes the quick change spring guide on the back of the gearbox. No need to take the gearbox out of the receiver just to change FPS. And that's what makes the QBS system featured on these rifles one of the quickest, most convenient ways to change your spring in the airsoft market for AR-15s. The crane style stock itself is made of a durable reinforced polymer and has plenty of space for our favorite Titan Power 3000 milliamp 11.1 volt lithium ion battery, which will keep us running all day long. But beauty isn't only skin deep with these AEGs. Inside these beauties is SEMA's Platinum Series gearbox, which has a specific set of internals and upgrades that really set them apart from really anything else in their price range. But let's see how they perform before we get into the gritty details of what's going on inside these beasts. I feel like I called them beauties earlier. Are they beauties or beasts? Our FPS test showed an average of 390 for the DDM4A1 on semi, averaged 25 rounds per second on full auto, and the DD Mark 18 showed an average of 330 FPS on semi, and averaged 28 rounds per second on full auto. Both tests were performed using 0.20 gram BBs and Titan Power's 11.1 volt lithium batteries. Both platforms are well suited to both CQB and extended range play, with the DD Mark 18 configuration being available in either 350 or 400 FPS, while the DDM 4A1 is currently only available in 400. Though swapping your spring to change your FPS quickly to match your field requirements is a breeze thanks to, once again, the QBS spring change system. Out of the range, the EMG Helios, DD Mark 18, and the DDM 4A1 were easily able to lay down a consistent, well placed grouping on both the 6 inch plate and the EVIC Professional Silhouette target at 50 feet. Out at the 100 foot mark, performance was similar with almost all the hits still landing on the 6 inch plate and the Silhouette target showing a slight increase in grouping size. We did notice that out of the box, 0.25 gram BBs seemed to be at the limit of adjustment of the factory hop up. So an upgraded barrel, hop-up bucking, and nub available here at evic.com would certainly net you even more distance and tighter groupings with heavier BBs. That performance is thanks to SEMA's Platinum Gearbox, which has gained a reputation for being a high-performance and reliable system that punches way above its price tag. Looking at the internal components, we see solid choices all around. A metal, rotary-style hop-up chamber, and a brass barrel are all standard spec and easy to upgrade or replace with different lengths and bore sizes available on our website. Inside the gearbox, we find more great components, like a high-quality polymer piston, which has a full set of metal teeth, the second tooth reduced, an aluminum mushroom-style piston head, and a thrust bearing. 
The cylinder is ported, and the cylinder head is aluminum with two O-rings. The air nozzle does not have an O-ring, but compression is still very decent right out of the box. The 13 to 1 ratio EMG high-speed gears are short-stroked by four teeth and ride on 8mm bearings, which lends itself to a really snappy trigger response. Paired with the trigger board MOSFET, which has a micro switch for the trigger, these AEGs are really responsive, added durability. It's not all the time that you can take something popular and something else popular, put them together and it all works out. But these right here, they're like peanut butter and chocolate. Rain and smooth jazz. Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons in a Adventures in Forgotten Realms card crossover. I gotta tell you, it's one sweet, sweet package. I'm a nerd. And you can get your very own EMG Helios DD Mark 18 or DDM 4A1 along with tons of other airsoft accessories right here at evic.com. Thanks for watching. Want even more airsoft content? Hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon. Follow us on Instagram and join our Facebook for epic weekly giveaways. Before we start, if you ever get a birdcage flash hider with a notch in it, no, it's not damaged. That's how they're made. No need to take the gearbox out of the receiver just to squeak, squeak, or squeaking. Giggity, giggity. All right. Yeah. All that performance is thanks to SEMA's Platinum Gearbox which has blah, 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 blah.